you bunch of weirdos to the Manchester United Career Mode. And guys, 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 I'd like to take this opportunity to come on, come on, because I'm a kiss on your butt. Because the, the support on this series has absolutely been bananas. I mean, there's there's no other way to describe it, and you guys are freaking awesome. I just want to say thank you. I never want to stop appreciating what you guys are doing for me, what you guys are doing for the channel. You guys are the best. I love all you weirdos. But enough of them. Enough of all kids and all their butter butts. We got Liverpool, ladies and gentlemen, and we have the press conference. What? Jose Mourinho tactics. What antics will be up in the press conference up against heated rivals? Liverpool. Will he be talking all that schmack? Throwing some shade up on Jurgen Klopp, the German. What will Jose do? He's gonna praise him. Yeah. And not in a sarcastic way like we were praising Pep. I honestly think that these two guys would get along like two peas in a pod. I don't... I, you, 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 you mark my words, man. I think they're gonna be chummy as hell. They're gonna start a bro ship, and I don't think a lot of people are gonna be like that between the Liverpool and Manchester fans, but... I think it's gonna go down. I think it's gonna go down like that for some reason. I think he's always gonna be kind of cold toward other managers, but I think there could be, you know, a possible, I just got a gut feeling, a man's intuition that this is gonna go ahead and happen. And we did sell Morgan Schneiderland in the last episode, just wasn't really working out for us, so that will put about another 20 million into our wages right there, well, our transfer kit. And as you remember in the last episode, I was saying, hey, we're looking for the uh, regen of Gigi Buffon, and this guy is it, Carlo uh, Ranocchia? Is probably how you pronounce it or mispronounce it, and right there he plays for Inter Milan. We're gonna see if we can grab him on loan. Maybe he could be an understudy to David Gea if Real Madrid ever comes to call him. And a lot of you guys, a lot of you guys are like, give Rooney back his cap uh, captaincy. I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was just a little bit of a mistake. We started out the last season. Uh, the new season with Messi was somehow in the captaincy, probably because he's the highest rated player on the team. But we're going to give Rooney back his captain's armband right there. As we'll, well, switch around. We'll give Messi the short left corners. We'll give Ronaldo the short right corners. And we'll give Ander Herrera the, uh, oh, not corners, but uh, free kicks, essentially. And we'll give Ander Herrera and Messi the corners right there. And as you can see right here, big signing for Liverpool this season is Thiago, the guy who spurned Manchester United long ago to uh, go ahead and join Pep Guardiola and freaking uh, at Bayern Munich. He's going to go ahead and spurn us once again and hopefully try to spurn us on the day. As you can see right here, most of the most of the same guys that you've seen, you know, for the most part. But John Stones will start ahead of Chris Smalling. We're gonna be rotating that trio of of uh, center backs in that back line, see who I can kind of fit, and you know, just try to rotate the squad right there. Besides that, nothing too crazy in the lineup right there. You know, uh, always gotta look out for Firmino. Gotta look out for Coutinho. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Can we get something? Can we strike first blood? Up in this and right here we go. Look at that. Ronaldo cutting inside to Rooney who hits it right at Simon Mignolet. And now big bad Bowser going for the crossbody. But Mignolet was actually on one. He was looking mighty feisty up in this. He was just like, ooh, ooh, I got a, he, he knew he, had a, he was going to have a hard day in the office right here. And it's only a matter of time. He is... Simone Mignolet, and uh, of all the amazing saves that he had early on, this is not his best. A speculative shot from Wayne Rooney is enough, but terrible handling by the big number 22, and the Belgian goes ahead and pairs it right into the path. The one man that you probably don't want latching onto, Cristiano Ronaldo, playing once again in that striker position, is absolutely blossoming now. Took a little bit, took a little bit time for him to kind of get into the, you know, get his groove back, but now that he's in, he's scoring goals that nobody was. David De Gea is always going to be blocking shots because he's world class. He is no mini. He is definitely no Mignolet right there and gets a nice little double save on the edge of halftime. And that could have easily been 1-1 apiece to Liverpool. But now in the second half, what can we see right here? Shaw plays it with a nice driven pass. Ronaldo laying it off and beautiful 1-2. Ronaldo unselfish giving it to Leonardo who strikes inside kicks one hit. An absolute power shot. And once again, not the best work from Simon Mignolet. The Belgian international might have to go ahead and find a up a new home because that was soft actually within range of him to save but just could not get his arm out quite quick enough and there we go Lino Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo both getting on the scoreboard they most likely will be pretty happy about that and then seeing if Messi can return the favor to Ronaldo who kind of gets stood up at the last second plays it out to Bowser Bowser gives it back to Ronaldo Ronaldo fires a shot he takes it and then he falls over the top of his oh, oh over Sacco right there and a soft, soft penalty. You know what I usually say, like, 
If it's a penalty now after the patch, it's really a penalty, but that, that, like, there was nothing right there. Maybe he slightly stumbled over Sako, so I'm gonna do a dox method. I'm gonna chip it. I'm gonna chip it right down the middle, because I feel like I don't deserve this one. And if Minulite goes ahead and saves it, then he deserves it. If not, I get to laugh in his, in his face hysterically, so we will see! He goes for the Jiggy Chips! <laughs> I actually don't even put it on target. That was an atrocious chip from Cristiano right there. But uh, whatever. We really didn't deserve it. We have the two-goal lead, and this could easily be the third. Anthony Martial is going ahead. Going to get cheeky chips! And oh, maybe a little bit more power. Too cheeky, too cheeky, Anthony. And now we're going to go ahead and bring Bastos Weinstein and Deli Alley to kind of see out the game. Get a little bit more fresher legs in that midfielder and cut it off. You know what we got to do right here. And then Cristiano Ronaldo, look at that. A little bit of a McGinney spin. Doesn't really get him anywhere, but then we play a little bit of one-two and Ronaldo is through, gets it taken out from underneath him, but still finds it. And this time finding the wrong side of the goalpost on that shot. But look at beautiful playing inside Delhi Alley. And this time Minulay actually making a half decent save. And the 93rd minute, we're going to do a little bit of time wasting. We're bringing in the man who I asked you guys if we should be selling. And it seems like a lot of you guys want me to sell him. So that is what the, uh, that's probably what the rest of this episode is going to be focused on is, does he stay? Or does he go? What do we do with Romelu Lukaku? But I know what we did to Liverpool today. A KG match, as you can see, I don't even know if there was a Liverpool highlight in there that wasn't a save. Absolute thrashing. If you look in the stats right there, they only had four shots, three shots on target. We monstered them in every single category, pretty much. Absolute domination. And yeah, this side, I mean, with this side, you would expect, you would expect against the likes of Liverpool, let's be honest, that, you know, that we would be dominating. And as you can see right here, delight over Ronaldo. His shirt is flying off of the freaking table up in the, oh, you gotta know, you gotta, he must be the best selling shirt in all of England right now because if he returned to Manchester, that was kind of, you know, that was kind of a, a given. And I mean, he's he's in scintillating form right now. A man on fire. And look at this. Uh, Capital One Cup. You guys already know I don't really care about the Capital One Cup. So we're going to go ahead give a lot of the second teamers. Let's see. Willem Ruther, Nahara, Blackett, and Justy all getting a little bit of game time right there. And we went 3-1 into Capital One. And advance we do get. Unfortunately, um, from AS Roma, they want a little bit more of that Mula Mula Mula. So we're going to go ahead and give them that, 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 that nasty stuff. But unfortunately, as you can see right here, Carlo or Nakia, I don't think we're actually actually going to be able to bring in because we have to give some exorbitant amount 4.5 million for a youngster he is the regen of Gigi Buffon but I don't know I don't know maybe we'll look for him a little bit in the future but as we continue right here contract well well the transfer offer was accepted for uh Ah, Raja Nangaland, and then we're gonna see if we can go ahead and agree to personal terms. And there we go, advance it, advance it just a little bit. And there we go, Raja. Oh, Raja, Raja, low ahead. And there we go. I thought about it, and as you see the vote right here, this is why I go ahead and accept this. You guys were dead even. It was 20, only 21 of you guys voted, and thank you to all you guys who did vote. But it was 777 for Ruben Davis, for Raja, and to just save the money. So I was like, whatever, we got that money. We're probably never going to bring in Pogba. I think Nangland is that steady rock. As you can see right there, amazing defensive stats, amazing stamina. The only knock on him, only 5'9 in that midfield. We'll see how he works out, but he's got the engine, the tackling tactician, and long shot taker trait. He is the anchor that I want to sit in that midfield. Only 28 years old, so he's no spring chicken, but what an all-star cast that we have in that midfield. Now we're going to go ahead and give him his... Uh, beloved number four, which he had at AS Roma right here. And we get another transfer offer for from Lukaku. A lot of teams have come in, but you guys know the rule. 65 million. If I can get 65 million from any team, I don't really care who it is. If I can get that much, I will go ahead and sell them. And we are top of the league right now, so I thought it'd be a cheeky time to go ahead and ask for a little bit of money. 50 million, maybe a little bit too much. You tell me right there. But when you're a team as rich as Manchester United, when you got owners and you know that you're the second highest grossing team in the world, you ask for a little bit of funds because we want to make ourselves into, you know, like the next you know, Galacticos. I, I I do want to bring in some youth. I don't know if Jose Mourinho is going to actually do that if he is appointed there. So we'll see, we'll see. We'll be tentative with the youth program and our academy, but I do want to try to bring a couple of youngsters through. As you can see right there, uh, Nagaland is going to slot right in. We will see if he can adapt. 
I have a poor track record, I must admit, of bringing new players into the team and them having kind of a, a slow start with us, but maybe we can shake that habit. This is season two. Can we get it going with Raja going ahead and starting in that anchor position, in that CDM position with Ander Herrera? Mostly, uh, once again, I am rotating. This time, uh, John Stones is out and Chris Smalling is in, but besides that, it's pretty much everyone the same thing. We might try to get Romelu Lukaku into this match, you know, just to see if he can, you know, show us a little something, something. If we are going to go ahead and sell him, maybe give him a chance right there. But now, Cristiano Ronaldo getting it over his head. And oh my God, that would have been an absolute way to announce himself to the Manchester faithful, but unfortunately, banging off of the post. And now, on Herrera, nice little heavy touch right there. Can he find. Mr. Cristiano! And a great sliding save, a last second save right there. And now it will be Norge on the attack right here. A little bit of a good bounce, but right at David De Gea on the secondary shot. And with pretty much no time left on uh, in the half, first half, we're going to go ahead and see if we can breath. If we can get one more attack right here, Nanglin is going to go ahead and get it. He's got a couple touches right here. Little three on the top of the box, and there we go. The first goal is a long shot with his left foot. Oh my goody goodness. And a game that we should absolutely be dominating, a lot would argue. Oh, and a little bit of a little dab. Oh my god. Way to go ahead and just get right stuck in. <laughs> Yonglin already knows everything that needs to do with this team. It's like, yeah, I gotta play defense, I gotta deliver passes, I gotta score goals, and I gotta dab. That's all I get. He's pretty much, alright, he's 100% integrated. As you can see, getting a little bit of a deflection, I think that's what holds up uh, Mr. Uh, Fabianski right there, and maybe delays him a split second. Or, or puts his arm out in the wrong, you know, uh, slightly wrong, uh, poor trajectory right there to allow that goal to get in. I didn't think it was the best of shots, but I was like, well, we're on the verge of halftime. We might as well have a shot made, as Zerka says. And uh, there we go. We have a goal made. And with that 60th minute, we're going to go ahead and bring in, as I said, we're going to bring in Bowser as well as uh, Romelu Lukaku. See if we can get a little play time with him. And look at that great, great defensive work from Rafael Varane. And there we go. Can we hit him? on some type of counter right here. I see the streaking overpass by Zor. Plays Cristiano Ronaldo a little bit far out. Not the best work from here, and it gets taken oh, out of bounds. Out of play, right? ah. Good idea from Bazor right there, but just could not work out. But on the initial throw in, we see on the top of the box, Wayne Rooney is absolutely unmarked. Let's it run onto him, takes two touches, and finesses into the far post right there. And he is an old, old man. I think he's going on 31 this year, but the captain Getting his armband back and showing why he is the captain right there. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. And if you leave him unmarked, the man can still stroke a nice one right there. And what a stroke that was. Oh, a stroke, a master class, and he, he still got it. Fabianski, no chance right there. Oh, and the number eight once again showing what he's talking I think that's what is his third or fourth goal in the season. Rooney is actually might be off to a faster start than he was in last season, if you guys do remember correctly. But look at this. Pretty much, this is what I'm talking about, if you remember from last season as well. Once you go up by two goals, the computer just says, hey, let's make this interesting again, shouldn't we? Uh, you know what? I'm not even going to play good football. I'm just going to go ahead, try to do a couple stuff first, and David Hay even saves that. But they, of course, of course, they get the rematch. Of course, because they just, it always happens when I go 2-0 up. If I can avoid this, like, once I go 2 0 up and they just like have this kind of weird momentum shift off of their first possession, I can usually go on to pretty much dominate the game. But once again, I fall asleep, our whole entire team falls asleep, and Jose Mourinho cannot be uh, too happy about that. Just giving up a 2 1 win, a uh, 2 1 lead right there. And now when Rooney, a poor touch from him, and there we go. They are away 93rd minute, not like this. Dempsey, the goal scorer, linking up with Basog. And look at this, I am on absolute skates, and we cannot get to that. Look at them, can he get inside? And it is right at the hair right there. Can we just throw it out and get rid of this? I try to hit him to the middle. And there it goes, hey, Malumbu sneaking it off on Golden, and they're gonna, gonna get another chance right here, but it's flipped into nothing. But it actually falls into the bat. Look at the aids that is just going on right now. Passes that you should be making, all of a sudden you don't make. Balls that you should be clearing are going right into the pass of other players, but Ah, the bullshit wasn't too bad. Too bad that is, look at this. This is ridiculous. In a game that we should we absolutely destroyed Liverpool, but now we get outshot and we get outshotted on target and outpossessioned by freaking Norwich. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And there we go right there. I asked for 15. That's why I asked for 15, because they're gonna give me 31 million. 
Now that is very interesting. That is very interesting indeed. Of course, we do have to move a little bit around to actually get something in the wages. So that'll effectively give me around 27 million with 100k in wages left over. We're going to go ahead and train up with guys. But now, what do I do with the last of this money? And I thought about it for a second. And a lot of guys seem to be, you know, hey, get rid of Lukaku. Get rid of Lukaku. And I'm, I like Lukaku. But I'm not in love with Lukaku, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a little bit of speculative transferring. I'm going to put it up, and if I can get a decent deal, I will sell the man. There we go. We're going to put 10 mil, and, you know, we're going to put 10 mil and Lukaku up for Roman Lukaku. We're going to go for... A lot of you guys have been saying, go ahead, get Lewandowski. And can you just imagine? The only My only fear of is we, if we get Lewandowski... That trio is absolute filth. Absolute filth. So we're going to go 25 billion and Lukaku for Robert, Robert Lewandowski. And the last guy that I want to play with is a guy that I, I think would actually fit my play style the best out of everyone. And that is Antoine Griezmann. Or Griezmann. And uh, we're going to go ahead and offer it up. He's actually cheaper than uh, Lewandowski. So we're going to offer up a, you know, I was thinking about 20, but I was like, man. Nah. So let's dock it down just a little bit. 15 million and Romelu Lukaku from that. And if I can get... You know, some deals to come through on those three, I'll consider selling Lukaku. You know what I'm saying? Because I still think I probably have a little bit, I, I do a little bit better with Lewandowski or Obama Yang. I know for a fact, you know, I love Obama Yang. I love pretty much every single Dortmund player there is. But, you know, uh, I love him a little bit more than Lukaku. This might be something that comes back to me because remember, Lukaku has an 88 potential. But right there, I didn't expect this. Two of them come back accepted. Bayern is ready to go ahead and move on from Lewandowski. And there we go. The only people that do reject is Atletico Madrid. Griezmann is not coming for that cheap. But 10 mil and Lukaku for Obama Yang. Or 25 million and Lukaku for Robert Lewandowski. I'm going to go ahead and leave that in the straw poll. That is the question of the day for you guys, ladies and or gentlemans. Gentlemen, man, mans. What do I do? Do I keep... You know, Lukaku, hold on to him. Give him a half season, see if he can prove a little bit more. Remember, he's only been with us for a half season. You pick him up in the January window, or do I go big? Why not? Do I just go big already and go ahead and get the likes of Lewandowski or Obama Yang right off of this bat and just create a absolute oh, horror trio up front of, you know, Lionel Messi on one side, Ronaldo on the other side, and then either Levo or Obama Yang in the middle. The only thing that I wouldn't, my only counter argument to that is, is I want Martial to be in there. And I think Martial is good enough to play, you know, with those two. So I don't know if I need to make this move. I could just keep Romelu Lukaku, you know, on the bench playing whenever, you know, in case an injury comes in. We don't have to spend big. And then maybe we save that money getting some, you know, good pre-contracts, some high-end pre-contracts in January. So that that is my pitch, ladies and gentlemen, but I will go with what you guys want because I'm a man of the people and I want you guys to be entertained to the max and, you know, I don't think you ever add a Lebedowski or a Wambiang to a Manchester United and it's going to be worse. So, <laughs> I can't argue against that. Anyway, guys, hopefully you guys are did enjoy. If you did, I most humbly ask that you go ahead hit that Pick like button if you Pick did enjoy. You? Or, you know, uh, anything else that you would like, go ahead. Hit it with the nips. Hit him with the nips. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it with the nips. My name is B-Minus. Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day. <laughs> I've been up way too long. I've been up way too late now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to bed right now. See you guys in the stream. When you guys are seeing this, I'll be streaming right away. Remember to stay yourself. Stay humble. And be weird.